Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey everyone, Sparkerman and 1992 Federal Disabled Game Review User. This time I review Frontier Developments' is first foray into the RTS subgenre. Is this game a massive success or a abysmal failure? Right, so rally your armies and let's go to war. The Warhammer franchise has been dominating the TTG scene for decades. The franchise has started in 1983. Since then, the franchise has been through many spin-offs such as the sci-fi hellscape of 40k. Even today, the popularity of the franchise is still going strong. This game in particular is set in the Age of Sigmar and is set in the war torn world of Gur. A force of humanity's elite warriors, the Stormcast Eternals, arrived to reinforce a Dawnbringer settlement which has been under a constant attack by the Auric Cruel Boys. The commander of the Stormcast Eternals, Sigrun, seeks an ancient relic that she hopes would turn the tide in their favour, hoping to save the settlement. So the accessibility scores are as follows. To kick off the review in a very high note, visibility given 11, in the accessibility section of the options menu, there are numerous colorblind modes that can be changed on the fly, even during a mission. This allows a colorblind player to pick whichever color scheme is more suitable for his or her impairments. Also, the size of every element of the HUD can be fully customized. This is extremely important as RTS games require lightning fast decision making. Make decisions quickly or you're dead. For example, if you focus your economy early on in the game, the enemy might be on his or her way to attack your forces or base early. This is known as rushing. Obviously, a lot of players would wind that as cheating and cheese, especially if you are the victim. So, colorblind modes can be essential for a player with visual impairment, especially in an RTS game. To continue this form of momentum, audibility gets got a sky high limit. Subtitle functions are present in the accessibility section of the options menu. Even better, the text of which appears in those subtitles can be fully customized. This allows players to read these subtitles without the risk of getting any eye strain. In multiplayer matches or skirmish matches against the AI, important events, for example, a control point changing hands, on screen notifications will appear in the top center of the screen. This will allow players with hearing impairments to keep tabs on what's going on in the battle as it progresses. Next up, Mobility has got a Sky High 11. As part of the course for all RTS games for PC, the game is primarily controlled by the mouse. Of course, for competitive RTS players, there are hotkeys. Now, these cocky shortcuts can be also be fully customized. There is also full controller support right out of the box. So you can plug in your Xbox One or PlayStation controller to play this game. Also, what makes this game truly unique as it has a zone unique system for issuing move orders to units when using a controller. And this unique system is not a direct step. With this, you can plot out a path for the unit or unit that you've selected, similar to waypoint mode in most RTS games. This adds a precision element when issuing move and attack orders to units. If you'd rather use the more traditional method of moving units with a pointer, in the center of the screen similar to Halo Wars 2, this feature can be switched off. Last but certainly by no means least, gameplay has got a mediocre rate. In short, this game feels a little shallow. In skirmish and multiplayer matches, only 1v1 or 2v2 game modes are available. The map pool is also very limited, even for an RTS game. However, there are map creation tools built into the game. That way, players can create their own maps and upload them into the in-game workshop which allows users to play and enjoy your created content with a single click. Initially, there are only four factions available, which is, to be fair, pretty standard for an RTS game. Command & Conquer Generals, for example, has the US Forces, China and the Global Liberation Army, or GLA. In this case, you've got the Stormcast Eternals, the Auric Cruel Boys, Night Haunt, and the Disciples of Zinch, which have their own sector of heroes to command. The only game mode that is available right now is Domination. Taking control over half of the mob's control points 
to start to drain the enemy team's tickets. The first team to drain the opposing team tickets to zero wins. Game time seems pretty similar to Warhammer 40k Dawn of War 2, right? That's because it is. At least Dawn of War 2 has an annihilation game mode. On top of the game's campaign and AI skirmish mode, there is a conquest mode. In this game, you pick one of the four factions the game has and conquer Gur battle by battle. In each and every battle that you go into this game mode, additional stipulations will be put into play. In this mode, no battle will feel the same. In summary, Warhammer Age of Sigma Realms of Ruin feels like an attempt to bring the mechanics and gameplay elements of Warhammer 40k Dawn of War 2 to consoles. And in my honest opinion, a very valiant one of that. But the shallow map pool and the lack of a 3v3 game mode makes this game feel a little barebone when compared to other titles of the shop genre. If you're an RTS fanatic who plays on console and is sick and tired of Halo Wars 2, this game could be an excellent choice. And the overall score is 102.5%. This is Blatter Commander 1990 signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Okay.